Yo, people YouTube, I'm the Watch It, and last week I talked about the Tudor Black Bay Pro and how much I loved it and the Rolex Explorer 2 1655 that it was inspired by. But what I didn't mention was that I love the 1655 so much that I actually bought about five months ago the Steinhardt Ocean 39 Vintage GMT Ulco Edition, which is pretty much a new old stock 1655, which is just like, oh. It's good. <laughs> and since Rolex hasn't made this watch in nearly 40 years, and it will probably never bring it back, and because I don't have a spare $30,000 to spend on a vintage watch, when someone in the comments section mentioned that Oko Watch Boutique had a perfect spec, I knew I had to get it, and I really need to know that I bought this watch with my own money. It's not sponsored in any way or anything like that, because you'll see later on that I just gush on and on about how solid and amazing it is. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the things that I've loved in hated over the past four or five months that I've owned my first ever Steinhardt and who knows maybe I'll see that there's no need for me to get a Black Bay Pro after all I mean but either way that being let's get into it So let's do the dimensions first uh, so you have a sense of the watch and it's got a 39 millimeter bezel which is the part that you will actually be seeing when it's on your wrist and if anything it wears a tiny bit bigger than a 39 millimeter watch mainly because the dial is a bit bigger than on an equivalently sized dive watch like the black bay 58 this for me is perfect because the other 42 millimeter versions were just too big for my taste the thickness is nice as well it's a 12.6 millimeters total but it wears maybe a touch thicker than that because there's no domed crystal to take away some of that visual heft but even then it's very very comfy the weight is 155 grams which isn't a lot in general but for a watch of this size it's i guess on the slightly higher end and that's mainly down to the quite chunky but super solid bracelet and i'm okay with that because the watch still feels very very balanced which is the most important thing for me so obviously my main love of this watch is that it's a 1655 Explorer 2 homage. Well, I mean, homage in many ways, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So the dial is where we get all the 1655 goodness. And I just love how weird it is. I mean, I just love watches that are just a bit strange, which makes them stand out a little bit more from the rest of the watches, you know, that much more. In this case, the weird 24 hour offset loomed hour markers are something that's pretty much never seen and then obviously throw in that awesome almighty freccioni hour gmt hand that is just such a bold look for an otherwise relatively chill-ish looking watch minus the hour indices yeah gmt hands are definitely one of the main reasons why i love gmt watches so much i mean they just add that extra you know visual element to play around with and this super legible pop of orange is making the most use of that extra hand and i think i have a soft spot for orange gmt hands considering my explorer 2 that i absolutely loved that i had and my zodiac sherbet gmt so and continuing on with the hands i absolutely love that the hands are just normal stick hands and it doesn't have the normal rolex mercedes hour hand so it definitely adds to the tool watch feel of the watch. And actually now that I think about it, I think one of the reasons why I love this watch so much is because of how un rolex -y it is. And that is absolutely a word. Also, I just love that everything is crisp white, making me feel like it's a new old stock 1655. And it keeps it looking like a full on tool watch that it's supposed to be. And you know, I'm not, opposed to Fotina, but the yellow Fotina that's on the other versions of this watch are just horrific in my opinion. I mean, they just look weird. Yeah, just overall, everything on the dial is done to a high standard and the loom is no different. And to be honest, I'm surprised at how effective and clean the loom application is despite the tiny indices that is working with here. I mean, the BGW9 is something that I love to see. I love blue and the look at night is pretty awesome with those offset 24 hour indices. So a quick side note about it very much being a homage watch and even a clomage watch at that point. And I know a lot of you will say that homages aren't good and whatnot. And I'm definitely not a fan of all homages out there. And I'm definitely not a fan of how insanely loose the definition of homage is. I mean, I made an entire video about my thoughts on this issue, but 
in this case, I am absolutely all for it because Rolex stopped making this watch nearly 40 years ago in 1984 or five. And yeah, I mean, they will never bring this watch back. And the vintage examples out over there cost well over twenty-five dollars to $30,000. And even if I did have that kind of money for a watch, there are so many other watches that I'd rather buy. And nothing would change the fact that vintage watches will never be as consistently reliable as a modern new watch. And yeah, if someone comes up to me and asks me like, oh, hey, is that a 1655 or is that an Explorer 2? Is that a Frecciona? Whatever it is, you know, I won't have any issues saying, no, it isn't that. And in fact, I'll want to talk to them even more because I mean, how many people out there could even recognize the watch, let alone be curious enough to ask about it in, in this hypothetical situation that everyone always thinks of. Yeah, the value found in this watch is pretty incredible and it beats out many other watches that cost much more because genuinely, if someone gave me this watch without a brand name on it, I would have easily said that it costs more than double, especially considering the solidity and the finishing of the watch and the fact that it's Swiss made with a Swiss GMT movement in it too. And the movement in this is a uh, ETA 2893-2 and online it says that it also could be an elaborate grade Salida SW330. Either way, I mean, you're getting a really high grade Swiss GMT movement in a watch like this for about $500, which to me is still an absolutely bizarrely good deal. Oh, and one thing to note is that Olko, the shop that made this variant, doesn't accept Visa, which was a hassle because I had to pay with my Amex instead of going through a firm, but yeah, just something to note. As for the movement itself, I actually like that it's a color GMT, meaning that the 24 hour hand is the hand that's independently adjustable since I don't travel very much and I like keeping track of other time zones. And one huge, huge advantage of this movement is that it's got a quick set date by turning the crown down or counterclockwise as opposed to having to set the date by cycling the local hour hand 24 hours at a time to just change it one day i mean which is unbelievably irritating to do and it's usually actually how most of these movements these flyer gmt movements you know have to change the date it's so irritating and now we have the bracelet which is a make or break category for me because I'm super picky about how bracelets, you know, look, feel and fit on my wrist and Steinhardt got it right on all three parts because first off the finish is great. The brush finish on the top and the polish finish on the sides, very well done. And the links, while they are on the thicker side, they are pretty proportionately sized to the rest of the watch, which I'm glad for. But yeah, I mean, they also feel very solid on the wrist and they have they just add a nice weight to the watch and yeah most importantly they keep the entire watch very nicely balanced which is very very important for me then it's got a 20 millimeter lug width which is great and then to go even further it tapers down to 16 millimeters at the glass which is perfect for me and i've said time and time again that the four millimeter taper is the taper for all bracelets and also there are two half links on this bracelet which is great because a lot of companies don't even give one. I mean, like, a <coughs> tutor. Now onto the clasp. It's got four micro adjust holes, which is awesome, alongside the two half links. And the clasp looks simple, and it is, because it's just a, you know, friction fit clasp with a security buckle on the top. But they're, like, weirdly solid. I mean, like, of all the standard clasps that I've had over my years, you know, with no on-the-fly adjustment and things like that, I would say that this is almost the best feeling clasp that I've owned. I mean, just, l just listen to the click over here. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it just oozes refinement. It's amazing. It feels so good. Onto the bezel and the case. And the bezel is a fixed 24 hour steel bezel and it's got the same font as the 1655, as it should. And I like this font way more than the font on the current 42 millimeter Explorer 2 that I owned. And you know, that one was just a little bit too sporty for me. It's polished on the sides and then it's got a radial brush 
on the top uh, both very nicely done the case is nicely finished and i really like the proportions of the case like you know how long the lugs are versus how wide they are at the ends and how much of the crowns stick stick out and whatnot also i like that it's a steinhardt case and not a completely ripped off you know rolex case as you can see from the side it's got a slightly sloping squared off lugs as opposed to a straighter case with a more dramatic curve when it comes to the lugs on a sport rolex case and uh, oh and uh, look at the crown i mean it's a uh, yeah super grippy and the finish is so good i mean it's got a sandblasted background and the steinhardt logo on top of it in relief it has a radial brush on it yeah i mean well done i mean no corners cut over here so on to the dislikes and the first thing is the shape of the lugs and what I mean by this is that, you know, they look good, but they are just way too straight and they float over the wrist quite a bit. And yeah, when it's on the bracelet, it's not really an issue because the bracelet drapes down very nicely on my wrist, you know, although I'm not really sure how this would feel on a smaller wrist. But when I tried it on straps, it was super irritating. And that's because the spring bar sits high up because the lugs are high up. And that means that NATO straps have to go up higher at a steeper angle and then come straight down at a steeper angle and this makes for a weird fit on nato straps unless they're really really soft i mean yeah nato's on the black bay 58 on the other hand flow very nicely of course this might not be a big deal for you because this does pretty much fit any strap well but it's just irritating for me and if the bracelet wasn't so good i think that this part of it definitely actually would have been a deal breaker for me because no matter how good a watch is, if it isn't comfy on your wrist, it's no good. So there you have it. Let me know what you think about this watch and if it's a watch that you own or if it's a watch that you want to own, if you have a different version of it, whatever it may be, I want to hear your thoughts. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, then go ahead and hit the like button and the subscribe button and all the buttons because I'll be having the Black Bay Pro on the channel here very, very soon. So uh, yeah, until the next video, good day.